Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining uh, in the sermon today. Uh, we're talking about the transfiguration of Jesus. It's an interesting story. Uh, one of the things that, that kind of hit me was in the research of this so uh, is this is one of the, the only miracle, really, that we read about that happens to Jesus. Um, and so we'll talk about uh, uh, how, you know, this was probably just a normal day for the disciples. Uh, they were just going to go on a hike. Uh, up this mountain. They probably didn't realize, uh, I imagine they didn't know what was going to happen, but of course Jesus did. And, um, and so it, it's an interesting story as we think about, uh, um, you know, what happened and trying to explain it, but then do we, do we go too far in trying to understand it, trying to explain it? Uh, another quote that I found, which was so interesting, is maybe that's not the point. Maybe the point is, is to join in. Um, and so I, I invite you just uh, to open your, your Bibles up as we read the scripture together and, and let us all have our hearts open to see and to hear what God is saying to us through this message. So again, thank you so much and I just praying for you as we read the scripture together. Matthew chapter 17, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, as you know, the words will be here on the screen, but uh, Matthew chapter 17, starting at verse 1, and um, if you uh, would like to stand during the, uh, during the reading of this, I invite you to do so. Matthew 17, starting at verse number 1. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him then Peter said to Jesus Lord it is good for us to be here if you wish I will make three dwellings here one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah while he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and, and from the cloud a voice said, This, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on the ground and were overcome with, by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. How many of you have seen the, uh, I, I think it's Disney, I think it's, Disney or Pixar, one of the two, I can't remember now, but uh, Tangled, you okay? We, we've seen it about 25 times, so if you want to see it, I've got uh, several, several uh, girls that would, wouldn't mind seeing that with you. So, um, uh, but in this, uh, in this one, it's a story of Rapunzel, if you, if you don't know. But uh, anyway, in, in there, uh, she has a little, uh, I guess like a chameleon or something. And, and I'm always interested by, by the, what's that? Oh, I thought I was being corrected. <laughs> Uh, but he changes color whenever he, you know, he gets worried about if, if you know, someone's going to get him or something like that. And, and I, you know, when I think about chameleons and how they, how they can change color uh, to blend in, it's, that's kind of neat to me, I guess. Uh, they kind of blend in, you know, um, most of the time because they get scared. Uh, they're fearful for their life. Uh, they, uh, you know, they don't want to be attacked by anything. And Really, their natural colors, <coughs> excuse me, could be brown or gray or, uh, or green. You know, uh, I also often think, you know, what if we could do something like that? <laughs> you know, just kind of uh, blend in, in a sense, get kind of lose ourselves, get lost in a sense where, especially when we get scared, we can retreat and, and we don't have to get hurt or, or anything bad happening to us. Uh, 
difficult. But sometimes we do say, we make a comment. Uh, you, you, usually when a human being is like this, we, we sometimes say they, they show their colors. No, that is not a positive thing usually when we say that. Where sometimes it's we get to this point and someone's done something to us or, you know, a family member, and we, we go, uh-huh, they're just showing their colors, meaning they're not being a nice person, meaning that's what they really are, or, you know, it's coming out. We, we usually don't say that when we're being positive. Well, here in this story that we've read here together, Jesus shines bright on top of the Mount of Transfiguration, and we might say that he was showing his true colors. But of course, it's very positive in this sense. His holiness, his, his true identity, uh, divinity, beamed not only around him, but in him and, and from him. We're like, where did this light come from? I mean, there's nothing that says there was a beam that came down from heaven. It came from within him, and it shone right. He didn't conceal it. it he didn't conceal his glory at all. He, he let it shine. You know, it was just like that song, let it shine, let it shine, let it. All right, listen. When I say that, <laughs> sing along with me. You guys do such a good, not you, you guys sing along with me. So he didn't conceal it. He let it shine just like the song says. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All right, yeah. You get the point. <laughs> We're trying here, folks. But can you just begin, I can't, it's hard to even start to imagine the beauty of this scene. You know, a light that was brighter than the sun. I mean, I, if you're like me, you know, I've been blinded sometimes, you know, uh, in, you know and, and especially with the, the snow that was on the ground for a little while, and you walk outside when it was so bright. It was brighter than that. It was a bright that we have never seen. A beautiful sight for for Peter and James and John to see, and one I, I I can all I can I can go ahead and guarantee they never forgot about for the rest of their life. Jesus took them on this high mountain to reveal His glory. Of course, they didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, it was no big deal for them to go on a hike up this tall tall mountain. I'm sure they mountain climbing. Walking was something they did. They, they, that's all they did. Um, but this one, of course, was going to be just a little different. Um, but really, you know, no one thought much when Jesus says, oh, okay, you guys stay here. I'm going to take these. We're going to go up there. We'll be back. You know, we'll see what happens. And no one really thought anything about it. It was just a normal, normal day, normal thing. Of course, it had been a pretty intense week for them uh, with everything going on, all the physical challenges and and, and the stress that go, went in with ministry and serving the people and the people always there and always wanting and this and this and this and this. It was stressful for them. So a hike was needed <laughs> to relax. They needed some, some ra rest and relaxation. I too love to go hiking. You know, we, we, we do that sometimes uh, for sure. Um, when, I, when I'm out hiking and and even, even uh, you know, if I'm by myself or with Mary and the girls or um, was just hiking with a, a group yesterday a little bit, not, not very far, but, but even just to get out just a little bit, um, I, I see in my own self, um, it cleanses my mind. It just kind of, you know, even though I'm probably, I do get to stop and just relax. Even, even when it was a little stressful on my body, <laughs> And my breathing, it's a way to relax. Uh, it, it does it does something for me. You can probably imagine that I it would not be a bad thing if I was hiking right now. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just feel so stressed. Sometimes there's everything going on, and you know, when is it going to end? And and whatever that is for you, you might you know, uh, some people like gardening and golfing, you know, sitting there reading something. You know, whatever it is for you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, those times kind of refill your batteries in a sense you know they they kind of give you that extra energy you need to, to keep going and that's kind of you know hiking being outdoors is kind of like that for me uh, but this was more than just a physical thing that that Jesus was he wasn't trying to add steps to the disciples Fitbit that they were probably wearing you know that wasn't it wasn't for that at all 
he had something else in mind for them. It was just another, another day, another thing. We know going up a mountain is very important uh, in, in the story. Way back, Moses went up a mountain once. Actually, he probably went several times, but when he went up the mountain, all of a sudden, he was talking to God. And the people could tell that, you know, when he had to put the veil in front of his face. Uh, another uh, person uh, that's kind of important in this story, Elijah, uh, fearful, thought he, he was going to get killed, and if he would have got caught, he probably would have been uh, because of ministry. Uh, he was running for his life. He didn't want to, to be caught, and so he just ran as far and as long as he could. And in that story, when he got tired, he got, uh, he got fed by angels, and he kept running until he got to a mountain. And then eventually, to make a long story short, heard a still, small voice. So Jesus takes Peter and James and John up a mountain, not only to reveal his glory to them, but also for them to see Moses and Elijah. And what a sight. What a sight it must have been for them to see Jesus talking with all this bright light. And, and somehow they could see Jesus talking with, with Elijah and, and Moses and how, you know, it's just goodness probably in every way possible, it's just so indescribable. I mean, you know, in our human minds, we try to put something down, and in the book of Matthew, it says that Jesus' clothes shined as bright, uh, was shined bright, and his face like, was like the sun. Luke, uh, uh, Luke described his clo uh, clothing as lightning. Mark mentions that they were brighter than anyone could bleach them, you know, to, to wash them. They, there's no way to get them that clean that perfect so really indescribable indescribable this scene was for sure uh, the glory of God shining through in and through Jesus and was not even it was shining through his skin and through his clothes and everything it was coming from him now Jesus had done some glorious and wonderful things I mean, he, he calmed the storm with just a, just with telling the storm, hey, stop, peace be still. Jesus, we know, walked on the water, the same body of water where he calmed the storm. There were folks who, who had not walked their entire life and sitting there begging, and he came and touched them, and they were healed. People who had a terrible skin disease and, and no one would touch, and they, by law they had to stay at a certain distance away he would go and touch them and heal them. Folks who were blind that, uh, for whatever reason, from birth or, you know, something happened along their life, began to see. And even those who had died were risen to life. Some amazing things that Jesus did. Man. But this, this story was in a another sense in, in, in some sense a completely different ball game he wasn't just showing his identity through his actions <laughs> he was showing it through his very being he was in every instance in every way possible the glorious God in the flesh he was Emmanuel God with us and this proves that. If nothing else proves it, this proves it. It was God, the very essence of God. And the three of the disciples got to see it with their own eyes. Can you just imagine this scene? <laughs> I think of the butterfly. Butterfly coming out of its cocoon for the very first thing, first time, you know, and it was, uh, it was something that just crawled around and probably kicked around and squished or got rid of because it was so gross, you know. But then they, they are in that cocoon, and, and after a while, you know, they, they start to come out, and they're uh, this beautiful, beautiful butterfly. The wings spread out, and you see all the colors, and, and they begin to fly, and they, you know, no longer an ugly insect looking thing that we just want to get rid of 
but it's a beautiful butterfly. And I imagine what an awesome thing it was to see how Jesus, how Jesus shone like the sun, brighter than the sun. And all just that went with it, and he was able to just, oh my goodness. <laughs> Peter and James and John were witnesses to this beautiful view of Jesus. As they describe it to us, the Holy Spirit, I believe, wants us to envision it in our own hearts and in our minds with our eyes of faith to see it like we were standing there with Peter, James, and John. Now this, uh, as you can just um, kind of picture, uh, Abigail and I got to see what they think is the mountain they might have went up on. Uh, we never got to go up there, but we, we saw it, and I was looking for a good, clear picture um, uh, for it to kind of show you what, what we think, what they think is, is a mountain, but it's overlooking this valley, and it just, you know, with, with that as a backdrop, with everything going on on top, all that, you know, just unbelievable to think about. In a way, the trip up the mountain really foreshadows another trip up another hill if you think about the night before he's crucified you know he's with his disciples and they're going to Geth Gethsemane and uh, you know and really it's the same three disciples that he pulls off and says hey come on let's go a little bit further into the garden and pray I need you praying now Luke's account of the the story of the transfiguration uh, says that they uh, you know um, well, uh, of the Gethsemane too, for sure, uh, that they were, that they even started to fall asleep at both times. You know, the, here on this mountain as well as in the garden. Um, and so this is amazing to think about that the parallel between these stories of kind of foreshadowing of what's to come. Now the theologian uh, Karl Barth um, notes and says uh, and writes about this miracle uh, that it's unique among the, all the other miracles because it is, uh, it is something that happens to Jesus and not by Jesus. Just, I, I never thought about it like that, that this, this is the one that the miracle happens to him and, and this light comes out of him and shines brighter than the sun. <laughs> Jesus never asked us to do something he wouldn't do himself. Jesus never asked us more, never asked more of us than he offers himself. And in this moment, his clothes are dazzling white, his face is shining like the sun, and he becomes uh, that, that vessel of light, that beautiful light. And Moses is there, as we said, and, and Moses is often look at, uh, looked at as the one who, who represents the law. And Elijah was there, as we said, and he was the one that represents all the prophets. And they were there talking. Just, just chatting away. Peter, of course, recognizes this as, uh, as the presence of God and immediately determined uh, uh, that wherever God is, a tabernacle, a place of worship, needs to be. And so he's beginning to tell his plan. This is what, hey, let me do this. Because, oh, this is a great thing, but a voice comes up over him. A voice from heaven speaks the same words, the same words that we heard at the baptism of Jesus at the beginning of his ministry. This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Only this time, the voice adds an important command to that statement. This time, God says, listen to him. Listen to him. Why listen? <laughs> Why listen? Jesus had been talking about and uh, sharing some clues and, and uh, different things like that about uh, what was going to be happening, what Jesus, what he was going to have to be going through. And, you know, of course, uh, uh, he, none of the disciples wanted to talk about that. They didn't want to talk about his departure. Um, that's one thing they didn't listen to very well. Uh, they wanted Jesus to rule powerfully over the world. He, 
they, the disciples wanted his kingdom to come truly on earth so that they wouldn't have to be, you know, under Roman rule anymore or anybody else's rule for that matter, uh, that he would throw, overthrow everybody. They didn't want Jesus to die. They didn't ever want to talk about that. And the times that it got brought up, you know, the disciples says, uh-uh. <laughs> the word of God the word of God takes us out of ourselves in a sense. Takes us out of our problems. Takes us out of everything that's on our hearts and our minds. And it reminds us that God rules. That God rules it all. God rules in it all. That word helps to bring people to that saving knowledge of Jesus. And they have that blessed reward of heaven. He doesn't shelter us from the word, but he strengthens, strengthens us through the word. So we, we need to listen. We need to listen carefully to what Jesus is saying. And what just happens to be the very first thing he says to his disciples after God this voice from heaven says, this is my son, my beloved, in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. What's the first thing he says? Get up and do not be afraid. Get up and do not be afraid. I know it sounds kind of funny to say this, but really every, just about every time uh, we have an encounter, a true encounter with God, in, in some tangible, you know, where we can really see, feel, hear, it, it's scary. I mean, really, every time we read about it in the Bible, people get scared. <laughs> uh, they get scared of those big old angels standing right there and coming out of nowhere and saying these words. And they constantly have to be told, hey, don't, don't be afraid, don't fear. When we, when we have that, that true experience with God and we you know, it, I, a couple people told me some things after the first service today that has happened, and, you know, as awesome as it is, all, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's a little scary. That fabric that was in the temple that separated the ordinary, which is us, to God had been torn because of Jesus, and so that means the light of God shines in and through all of us. So much brighter than we could ever ever imagine so with that at least I do I want to make sense of it what does this mean <laughs> what, what is God saying what is God doing what, what, what do we, what's the questions we can ask that we can figure this thing out we try to, to make up or try to find some meaning that makes somewhat sense to us so that we can you know kind of go on with our lives and, and all of this and boy it would be so nice It'd be so nice if we had a, um, a secret Jesus Dakota ring. Wouldn't that be nice? In fact, Ed, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can have one for uh, 52 payments of $39.99. Uh, we will make you a ring, and it'll be a secret Jesus Dakota ring. Uh, let's make it out to the church, all right? <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> but wouldn't that be so nice? If we, just, if we really had something that we could just look at, oh, okay, this is exactly what Jesus meant right here. This is exactly what this situation means. This is exactly what was going on here. And boy, that'd be nice if we could just uh, make that ring and have that right there with us, that we can figure it out. I was reading, I was reading uh, uh, something from Barbara Brown Taylor was the author of this. And she says we might be missing the point if we try too hard to figure it out. And what, why I bring this up, because she made such a huge point. She says, what if, what if the point is not to decode the cloud, but to enter it? But to enter it. She, she writes, fear is a natural human response to things we can't understand. We are afraid of what we can't see, what doesn't make sense. We fall down like the disciples, she writes, and we hide from the things that confuse us. It is in that very moment that Jesus reaches down and touches us and says, get up. Do not be afraid. We 
sometimes get into some very dark places. Sometimes we get into situations we don't know how to get out of. We really don't know how we got in. And it scares us. This morning I did something that I, I really don't like doing because quite literally it scares me. I mean, you know, there's we joke about being scared, but I had to do something this morning that truly, truly scares me. I got here so early, the sky was dark, and the church was dark, and I don't know what it is, but I am scared to death of dark churches. <laughs> you know, I wish that was a joke, but I was serious, because I, I got here, I'm like, oh, doggone, should I just go drive around for a while till the light comes on, till the sun comes up? You know, so I got my little light out. I opened the door and I just started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. <laughs> got in my office real quick, shut the door. <laughs> I don't know why it is like that. But we really do get into some dark places, don't we? Where we can't see the next thing coming. Where we can't understand what's happening in our midst. When he said that to Peter, James, and John, <laughs> they looked up and they saw no one but Jesus that's it that's the point to see no one but Jesus listen to him that was God's word listen to him no matter how confusing or or frightening experience may be, you know, when we encounter God, I mean, wh whether it's a good situation or a bad situation in our lives, we, we, sometimes we don't need to understand or explain it all away. We don't need to interpret it too much and, and decode it and, and understand everything about it. We can respond to God's presence without fear by looking to Jesus alone. He doesn't scold us and berate us and talk down to us. He doesn't say, well, duh, come on, you should have got this by now. No, he, he comes to us. He reaches out and touches us. He says, get up. Don't be afraid. Get up. Don't be afraid. Ed, get up. Don't be afraid. Oh, no. Hey. Not yet. Terry, can you get up? Abigail, you. Angie, could you get up? Youth band, can you get up? Church, can you get up? Peter was eager to put up a tent, a tent of meeting, a tabernacle, a worship space for his encounter with God, but God only wanted him to pay attention, to listen to Jesus. All right, you guys can sit down. I just, I just wanted to see if you'd stand up. <laughs> You guys did. That's great. But oftentimes, that's how it is with Jesus. We might be afraid if he says, hey, get up. You know, I wonder, you probably thought I was going to ask you to speak or do something or sing or something. I don't know. But a little scary to get our name called. It's a little scary when... When Jesus tells us to do something, we have no idea what in the world we're about to do. He says, let's get up. Don't be afraid. When we focus our attention on Jesus alone, we will start to look more and more like him. You may or may not realize this, but we... Wednesday we're starting the season of Lent 
Uh, we'll have a special worship service that night. Uh, Ash Wednesday, we, we remember that ashes, we came from ashes and to ashes we return, but, but in the midst of that, we also remember that we're worth dying for, and Jesus proved that. We, he cares for us, and so we, we begin this season before Easter, and I want to encourage you to notice the moments when God shows up in your life. Just notice those moments. Maybe, you, you know, I, I, I might, uh, I'm going to try <laughs> um, to make a note somehow when I see Jesus. When I, when I just feel like this is a God moment. Uh, and I want to encourage you to do the same. Maybe if you're writing it down or at least think about it, at least do that. But I also want to encourage you to make yourself ready for God to show up in your life. Uh, how do we do that? One of the uh, one way to do this is uh, through the practice of spiritual disciplines. Uh, our family has had a tradition of uh, giving up something during, during Lent. Um, and so, um, you know, you may do that. There might be something in your life that is kind of, you felt is, it'd be okay to do without for a little while and take that time that you would have put into that to Jesus. But I also want to encourage you, if, if you do that, I want to encourage us all to take on something. Take on uh, a more focused prayer life. <laughs> if, you, if you feel like you don't have one right now. Uh, maybe you hunger for more intentional reading of God's word. It just takes a verse a day. Just a verse. Just to open up God's word and to read. Maybe, maybe we can focus on more, uh, being more generous giving in, in our giving towards the needs of the church and the poor. Maybe we need to find... We had to schedule those silent moments so that not only do we pray to God and talk to God, but that we allow God to talk to us. And as you encounter these practices, you may discover, you will discover, that the person that you look at in the mirror every morning will change little by little by little. You may notice that you are being shaped and formed more and more and more into the image of Christ. We are being transformed from one degree of glory to another. And, of, you know, of, it happened that, in a moment there with Jesus, and it can happen in a moment, but usually it does not happen overnight. It can take a time, some time for that to happen. But I believe that the change has already began, has begun in each and every one of us. So get up. Get up and do not be afraid. This, I promise you, this will not end in failure. Jesus, even though crucified and died, will rise again. That, that is why we don't need to be afraid. That's why we don't have to, to live in fear. Jesus is going to win. We know that. Death has been and will be conquered. Sin has been and will be paid for. Heaven is yours. Through faith. Free of charge. So through this season of Lent, don't forget about the end of the story here. <laughs> For Christ is with you in the cloud, wherever we might find ourselves, and you are becoming more and more and more like him, transformed and transforming into his image from one degree of glory to the next. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you walk with us. We thank you, Lord, how you are transforming us. And if there's anyone here, anyone here, Lord, who came in with fear, help them to hear, to feel your touch, and to hear your words. Get up. And do not be afraid. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.